You're a fraud, Nigel. Go back to the room and put your up on the other two. Stop lying. This selection is too important. Well, it was actually quite disgusting, to be honest, that an Irish multi-millionaire could have the temerity to come and shout down fishermen who had had made up a substantial effort. That day, the Thames epitomised the whole referendum campaign. Here was an industry that was motivated enough to take its message to the heart of government, and here was the, the well-to-do uh, metropolitan establishment shouting their concerns down. I mean, in, in terms of a publicity loan goal, that will go down as the biggest one in history. When you hear about Norway thriving and Faroe thriving, that's what Britain could have too. A modernised fleet, young guys with a future in the industry, uh, a community-based, family-based industry again, and yeah, this harbour once again could, could flourish, and the same for all the harbours around Britain. This, this harbour was just, uh, it was so bustling, so thriving. Uh, you had a big fish market down the opposite side, big ice plant. Um, this is just one of the many harbours around Britain synonymous with fishing in the past. Low stuff, Grimsby, Hull, um, Aberdeen that are, are totally gone. The government needs to, 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 to have a bit of Churchill spirit, a bit of Bulldog spirit and, and fight our corner um, to, to, to secure what is rightfully under international law, ours, our fish stocks that we're giving away and going into Europe. We've got the legal right to take back our fishing grounds out to 200 miles and from there we can define a proper fit for purpose policy. It would be an easy industry to sell out for a second time but it would be an easy industry to save as well.